Okay, now, this one, giant covalent substances, is um, a covalent because it involves atoms sharing electrons with each other, as opposed to the ionic bonding, where they are swapping electrons over here, they're just sharing. And they're different from the simple molecular compounds because they keep on growing. So they form lattices, whereas the other ones, the other simple molecular compounds, like hydrogen, are formed, there's two hydrogens come together and that's it. They don't come a group of hydrogens and let's add in more and more and have a hydrogen party. No, there's just two hydrogens. Whereas in these giant covalent ones, these lattices here, of, in these cases here of carbon, can just keep going and going. These are all carbon atoms. They're all sharing electrons, and the carbon is sharing four other electrons with um, other carbons. So if we, if we look at them, let's see, there's our carbon, and it's covalently bonded to four other um, carbons. So that's important. So in a diamond, there each carbon has four, let's try and write it, covalent bonds. Now if we look at graphite, Good, thank you. If we look at graphite over here, this one is, um, if we count them, it's a bit more difficult. There's one, it's bonded to one, two, and then one right down here. So they're bonded with three, uh, three other ones. So diamonds with four, and this one has three covalent bonds for each carbon. Okay, and this lattice thing is important because they can keep going. Because of this, they have very different properties from the simple molecular ones that we looked at earlier. The simple molecular ones, if you remember, um, have a very low melting point. That's because they, they're they quite happy in their molecules, like one hydrogen loves the other hydrogen. But they don't really like the other two hydrogens next door. So they'll, they don't need much energy to move away from each other. They stick in their molecules, so H2 will move away from another H2, which will move away from another H2. They stay in their molecules, but they move away from the other molecules. Very weak intermolecular bonding. Whereas here, if you, if you think of the two hydrogens together, they've got very strong forces of attraction. And this is the same here. These carbons have very strong forces of attraction. And there's not another molecule over here that it doesn't like. They're just all together. So they have very high uh, melting and boiling points because of the covalent bonding. So high uh, melting and a boiling point due to that covalent bonding, because that covalent, that sharing of electrons is very, very strong. Three covalent bonds, four covalent bonds. So that's odd for a covalently bonded thing. This one is even more odd. Now graphite, as you find in pencils, it's in layers. So here's a layer, another layer, and another layer. And as you write, one of the layers comes up on your paper. Now the bonds here, which doesn't really show well on this diagram, should be dotted really because they're not very strong bonds between the layers we've got these sort of partial bonds with um, which means that there are electrons that can whiz around between them so there are electrons between the layers now these ones if you didn't know are called delocalized electrons this is higher tier for this bit so delocalized electrons that means electrons that are whizzing electrons would be good, whizzing around between the layers, only in this one, so here, between the layers means that it can conduct electricity because a flow of electrons means that uh, electricity is flowing. So there's no electrons in this one, so this one doesn't conduct electricity, this one does. Both of them have high melting and boiling points. Now especially with the higher tier, you've got this other one as well, silicon dioxide. Um, <clears throat> Again, I've put this in here to just, just try and get your head in gear, that they love each other. So the amount of energy needed to split up these is huge. So it has a high, again, the same thing, melting and boiling point. So it's the same as diamond, really, but silicon dioxide you come across as well. Um, covalently bonded, you've got... Uh, really, really strong bonds and you can't get them apart.